Ephesians 4, we're going to start at verse 7. And it says, but unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Somebody say grace. Right. How many know your gift for, for the gifts that you carry? There's, how many know there's levels of gifting that you can have? And you can increase in levels of gifting. Um, the name of the book, um, The Gifted Spirit, if you guys want to know some of this content is also from that book. You can get it on Amazon. Um, you can go on my website, michaelwatsonministries.com. You'll find it there as well. Go on there and go on books. You can purchase a book. I know some of you already have some copies too. It's called The Gifted Spirit. I talk about the different dimensions of gifting. How to recognize gifting. So the scripture says, the measure of the gift of Christ. But unto every one of us is given grace. So when you're dealing with gifts, you're dealing with grace. Why? Why is that? Because there's nothing you have to do to have a gift that God has given. And how God has called you. There's nothing that you had to do to earn it. It was given by grace. It was a gift. It was a free gift from the Lord. Your purpose. Your calling. Your gifting. There was nothing you could do or nothing you had to do to earn it. It was freely given to you. You were positioned by the Lord. Many of us think that we chose him. But in actuality, he chose you. He chose you. Let me help somebody. He chose you to choose him. Oh, you hear me? The gifts and callings of God. God chose you to choose him before the foundations of the world. Before you were even formed in your mother's wombs, the Bible says he knew you and he called you. And the scripture says, I called you as a prophet to the nations, speaking of Jeremiah. I called you as a prophet to the nations. In other words, he was saying, listen, Jeremiah, you trying to figure out what you're supposed to do, what you need to do. You trying to figure out who you are. But I already established that before you were born. Is somebody hearing me? I already established those things before you came into the world, before you were a, a, a speckle in your mama's eye, is what my parents used to say. The purpose that resides in you is not something you can earn or need to do anything for. I hope somebody's hearing me. It was given to you according to the measure of the gift of Christ. By grace. So there's a specific thing. There's a specific purpose. It's not general. It's not just something that you wish upon a star and you or you you, you know you throw the dice and oh this is what I do. Let me help somebody today. Growing up in uh, school, they tell you, and it's getting worse today. It's on a whole other level today. But they say, you can be whoever you want to be. And then that sounds positive. It sounds good. But um, that's the spirit of the world. You can be whoever you want to be. They tell you in kindergarten. What do you want to be when you grow up? But that's not how God designed it. He didn't design you to be whoever you want to be. How many know that's what they taught us? And guess we're taking it real, real far. Now we be in, we be in more than you know, want to be firemen and want to be you know doctors. Now we're wanting, to, men wanting to be women and women wanting to be men. Are you hearing me? Give them an inch, you'll take a mile. So we've got to put that in the proper place. 
when it comes to your purpose, when it comes to who you are in Christ, it's not a um, figuring out thing. Some of us are struggling because we're trying to figure it out. When it's not something you need to figure out, it's something you need to discover. Discovering something is a little bit different than figuring it out. Discovering something is pulling back the curtain and saying, oh, wow, that's what that is. Oh, wow, that's who I am. Oh, wow, that's what I'm called to do. Hmm. Because there's a place where you, you might not even agree with it. There's a place where you might not be in touch with it. When that word comes to you and God says, I've called you in this way. You may have already disqualified yourself. But as much as you've disqualified yourself, it does not cancel the calling. The Bible says the gifts and the callings of God are without repentance. In other words, it can't be taken back. So you can live and die with a gift. You can live and die with that assignment in you never having accomplished it. But it goes to the grave with you because it's without repentance. You can't lose it if you try. I don't care how many people you slept with. I don't care how many people you beat up. I don't care how, I don't care what issue you had. I don't care how much drugs you did. I don't care how much alcohol you bought them. I don't care who you dogged out. Nothing can cancel the gift in you. Let me help somebody understand. Even outside of Christ, that gift is still there. It can even be used for the other kingdom. That gift is so much. Come on, I'm helping somebody. It's yours so much that even outside of the house of God, even outside of the Lord, even in the dark kingdom, even submitted to the devil, the gift is still there. That's how much the gift is yours. That's how much God's grace has given something to you that he's connected to you, that he's birthed within you. So there's dimensions and there's levels of gifting. And so the grace, the measure, it says, but unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. So everyone's given a different measure. They're given different gifts with different measure based on grace. There's things that God has given me to do and there's gifts that he's given me that were simply just grace. I can think back. I didn't even know what the gift was. I didn't even know what I was functioning in. Standing at the grocery store, checking out people's items. And out of nowhere, I start seeing the names of people coming through my line. And they, some of them were wearing name tags. I saw name tags in the spirit, but they weren't really wearing name tags. So when I called out, they were, they were confused. How do you know my name? It's a name tag. Wait, there was a name tag. Is that prophetic gift? Come on. I knew names before. I knew them before. I Hallelujah. And so those things would happen to me from now and, then, and every now and then. Uh, strangers would visit me that other people couldn't see. I never forget when people would come visit me and then uh, people, at one point somebody walked through them. Angels, come and visit me at the grocery store. Shook his hand. Prophesied over me. I thought something was weird about them because they were holding the candy bag. They were holding the bag of candy upside down like this. They were new. <laughs> they were fresh. <laughs> they had cornrows there. I said, who's your barber? Man, I've never seen cornrows that tight in my life. It's like, man, it's perfect. 
smile, teeth bright. I'm like, man, what kind of toothpaste you use? You know, ah, no, nah, they wasn't human. <laughs> they were angels. Came to release a word to me. Came with a warning. I never forget what he told me. He said, you got a girlfriend? I said, no. He said, you want to watch out? He said, you want to watch out for the girls. They'll, they're trouble for you. It's very specific. Grabbed my hand said, watch out for the girls. They're trouble for you. The things that God has for you will get you in some trouble. How many know the next day I, I met trouble? The very next day. I didn't listen to his, and I didn't listen. Oh, I hope somebody's hearing me. I didn't listen to his warning. The very next day, 24 hours later, I met trouble. 16 years of my life. Cost me 16 years that I could have, you know. Somebody say, somebody say grace for your gift. Hallelujah. Um, so many different things, you know, and, 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 um, I can, and, and so, so you, you'll recognize the gifting that's in you. It was given to you. There's, there's nothing that you can do to eliminate that, to cancel it. It's there. It's in you. You can only delay it. You can only shut it down and stifle it and keep it from functioning and flowing and operating. But God wants to activate those things that are in you. Hallelujah. Verse 8. Wherefore saith when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens that he might fill all things. Now, we are in our prophetic training season. Hallelujah. Those of you who are serious, I'm only interested in the ones who are serious about growing in their gifting and calling. Message me. There's a group that I'm doing, the prophetic training chat group that we're doing. I'm, 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 I'm preparing to give some people ground to um, increase spiritually. Some of us are stuck because you just don't know some stuff. And you need to graduate from doctrines of men to doctrines of the spirit when you're looking to increase like that. So there's certain things I can't give you uh, on a breakout church platform. But that I need to give you off of the platform of the prophetic office for you to receive. If you're serious about growing in the prophetic, if you feel God tugging you in that direction, reach out to me. I'll connect you with that group. And um, those of you who are already in, some of you are on here, uh, even some of you in, in, international. I had someone from London. I was um, counseling with someone from London this morning. So people are, a lot of people are reaching out. They're pulling on this ministry for, for some of that. They're seeing us on YouTube and they're like, well, you want to connect with We need deliverance. We need direction. So people are reaching out. Um, if you guys are connecting with the groups, I'm going to tell you right now, uh, I, I want to see y'all interact. I want to see you comment. I want to see you emoji. Emoji me. Come on. <laughs> emoji me. Heart. You got a lot of options there. Do something. I, I posted on the website today and then I erased it. I didn't want to be mean. I said, I'm, I said I'm, uh, I'm... Um, I'm getting rid of anybody who's just spectating on these groups. And I want to be mean. But y'all emoji me. I mean, because what, I'm going to tell you what it does. Because we're limited. Sometimes we're limited to the tools that we have. I like interaction. Because I know that my gift flows when, when um, there's a two-way thing happening. I don't like to talk at people. That's just me. Some other people are different. Somebody say, know your gift. I know, I've learned long enough to know what activates the angels in here. And, and, and um, uh, I, I've learned enough to know um, how they respond to me. But um, I like to 
have interaction. I like noise. I like amen. Some of y'all been quiet, and so I said, nah, you, you lift up your voice. Come on. I like to hear hear the sounds of the, the sounds of heaven. Laughter, shouts, excitement. Shake and wake somebody up. Amen. You know? So I like to hear that. What does that do? It um it stirs me. It stirs me. And it stirs the atmosphere. I like it because it breaks that religious environment where we think we gotta. Pastor is speaking. <laughs> the prophet is prophesying. No, come on, shout. Amen. Get excited. If you want a prophetic word, you better pull on that thing. So we're setting some ground for God to really be able to move. We want to loosen up. How You might be surprised what I'll be okay with. You might be surprised. Try me. Don't be afraid. because Don't be afraid to be rebuked. I might rebuke you, but don't be afraid to try me. Come on now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I see y'all from the groups too. Bless you. Sarah Page, Mikalin, Mikalin, bless you. Devin, bless you. Praise the Lord. So if you get on my groups, you better emoji. You better emoji. Let me know you watch that video. And when you do that, I'm telling you, when you do it, it's going to prompt me to, get, to do more of that. It's going to prompt me to do more of that. But we're in a prophetic training season. This happens every, every couple, a couple of times, every single year. This happens. The, the, the burden comes on me to start talking about the gifts and callings of God, to start teaching about the prophetic, the pastoral, the apostolic, the evangelistic, and the teaching gifts. And it's almost like God, it's like he renews my spirit and it's like I'm teaching it for the first time every time. When that comes on me, so we're in that season because God is trying to give you something, he's trying to shift you somewhere. He's trying to shift you into something. But there's a dimension of gifts that are called gifts of the Spirit. Gifts of the Spirit or spiritual gifts. Somebody say spiritual gifts. Spiritual gifts. So... There's a dimension of gifts that God gave me this word for to help you understand because the language is important, but I'm trying to use language you can connect with. Not everybody's familiar with biblical language. So to help you, the Lord said the talent, having a talent or a natural gift is a sign. It's always a sign of purpose. Having the affinity to do something well, being good at something, is a sign. I submit to you, every single human being on earth, whether they've discovered it, some, some of y'all just ain't discovered it yet, is good at doing something better than your neighbor. Every human being on earth has that one thing that they can do, they don't have to think about, they don't have to try, it just comes natural. If you ever watch somebody in their talent, in their natural ability, they make it look easy, but then you got to try to do it. Remember my wife, she watched me paint this, that four piece. How many ever seen, saw the four piece picture of uh, Jesus earrings? And many of y'all know, some of y'all who know me from my, uh, from the art, uh, the art gallery. I painted this four piece. It was about, you know, about maybe about three by four, like almost four, uh, three, three feet by four feet, really big piece. My wife says, you make that look so easy. That looks very complicated. And I said, well, it, it, to me it is. It's easy. It just comes natural. I don't have to try to do this. All I need is a blank canvas and some brushes. And if for whatever reason, it just comes together. She's like, I'm jealous. <laughs> how do you do that? That would take me a year to even figure out how to do. And you did it in two days. Somebody say Gift. It was a talent of mine. Ever since I was young, I, for whatever reason, I had the ability to see color and shapes 
and pictures and be able to not just see them, but recreate them. Uh, give me a paper plate when I was five with, with, some, with some paints on them. Uh, give me a piece of paper, some colored pencil. I don't care what it was. You be sitting in front of me, I'll draw you. When I was in high school, uh, they used to get so mad at me. Don't let me have a crush on you. I got like five drawings of you in my, my, my different, all different angles. I would draw my crush. I'd draw that girl I had a crush on. I never, never forget. She walked past my desk. She said, she said what, what are you doing? She caught me drawing her. <laughs> Sitting at her desk where her legs crossed. She caught me drawing picture, drawing pictures of her. I would draw the students in the class. I, that was just my gift. That was just my talent. I'm going to help somebody today. That was my natural ability. It was a manifestation of a gift. Me being able to see something in the natural and uh, express it on paper. But I used to say all the time, the, the gift of, of being an artist or a painter or someone who draws is not just that you can copy what you see. But being able to take what you see and express it from your perspective. You can create what you see, but when you draw it, you're expressing how you feel about what you see. So when someone sees that artwork, they're not just seeing an image, they're seeing a feeling. They're seeing an idea. They're seeing a perspective. That's the gift of an artist. So I've always had that gift. Sitting in class, drawing people in class, drawing them sitting at their desks. I've always had that gift. Now, catch this. The gift was just the, uh, let me help you, the talent, the natural ability was just a manifestation of something greater that was in me. Are you hearing me? The talent that you have. Uh, somebody's got a social skill. You can talk to people. You can you can uh, convince somebody. You can convince anybody to do anything. You got a social skill. Somebody has charisma. That natural ability that's in you is just a sign of something greater. You are only scratching the surface. You're only scratching the surface. So everybody's son, Michael can draw well. Oh, he's going to be a famous artist one day. Something inside of me said, no. <laughs> I like to draw and I like to paint. But there's something deeper inside of me that knew my destiny was not that. In other words, don't limit me. How many of you have felt like that? Don't limit me by just what you see I can do. My wife's saying she, she had a tremendous, amazing writing gift. She'll write novels, run circles around you writing novels. She said she, she was writing, she was four years old, writing whole stories. She's got a, she got awards and, 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 and accolades all throughout school by people just recognizing her gift to be able to write, to be a writer. And she said, everybody said you're going to be a going to be a, a, an English teacher. People just start putting labels on her. She, she didn't like that. She didn't like that. Don't limit me because what you see. Just because I can do this doesn't mean this is where I'm limited. Everybody's like, little Michael, he's going to be an artist when he gets older. Oh, he's going to be a painter. No. I, I like to paint, but I don't know if I want to do that. There's something more. I felt that. Even young, I felt there was something more than just this. I began to learn what that gift really was, that talent. It was a sign of something greater. It was an indication of something deeper that was in me. That God was going to begin to, tr begin to awaken inside of me. I'm going to help somebody. Listen, being able to see something. And express it on paper was just a part of a creative gift that God had given me. It was the prophetic. It was a manifestation of the prophetic gift. Because what does the prophetic do? 
The prophetic takes God's perspective and expresses it to the world around him. Takes the creative nature of the Lord. The prophetic takes the creative nature of the Lord and through the medium of words paints a picture. Is somebody hearing me? The prophetic takes that creative nature of God and through the medium of words creates things establishes things, activates things. Does somebody hear me? So I was never limited to just pen and paper, but God wanted to let me know that it was just a sign of something greater. That in fact, I was an artist, but that's just what the world called it. But in the kingdom, the artist gift with, within me was a prophet waiting to emerge. Is somebody hearing me? Yeah. I want you to put in the comments on Facebook and say this with me in the house. What is waiting to emerge out of me? What's waiting to emerge out of you? The talent, the natural ability, the thing that you can do well. Is just a sign of something deeper. So, well, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to do some part twos on this, part two and part three. Hallelujah. Now, I told y'all this was my specialty. This is the one message I, I, I it just pours right out of me. The gifts and callings of God. So, there's one dimension of gifts. The one dimension of gifts in the natural, and that's your talent. That's a gift, something God gave you to do well. Many people live on that gift and they stay on that gift, but there's something more. There's something more than just what you can do naturally. Because, let me help you, uh, your talent was never meant to be on its own. So, somebody's functioning off a of talent they're in a vocation, they're in a career off of their talent, but it's not enough. And the Bible says your gift will make room for you. But that talent is not enough. You're not making enough, you're not satisfied. It's not enough to cause you to be able to accomplish what God called you to do because your talent was never meant to be on its own. Your natural ability was never designed to just be a natural ability. It was designed to partner with this other gift. It was designed to partner with that other dimension. It was designed to partner with the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit begins to partner with you, to partner with your talent, to partner with your natural ability. It will shift what you thought you could do to a whole other level. And so as the Holy Spirit begins to infuse your natural ability with strength and multiplication and what you could do naturally ends up being maximized by the Holy Spirit. There's another dimension of gifts that you become introduced to. Somebody say spiritual gifts. Spiritual gifts. Hallelujah. We're going to teach about the spiritual gifts on another lesson. Today, I want to talk about another dimension of gifts. So we're going to keep moving forward. So spiritual gifts. So there's the gift of um, probably the gift of faith, the gift of miracles, the gifts of healing, spiritual gifts, the gifts of word of knowledge. All of these are within the realm, within the dimension of spiritual gifts. So when the Holy Spirit partners with your talent, your natural ability, the Holy Spirit begins to activate spiritual gifting within your natural ability. Watch this. Because there's an element that your natural gift did not carry for the kingdom, that your spiritual gift gifting does. Your natural gift does not carry 
purpose. It just carries ability. Your natural gift does not have the capacity to exude purpose on its own. It just carries ability. It's the spiritual part that connects. The Holy Spirit that now feeds purpose into your natural gift. Let me help you understand. I was in art school painting masterpieces, being recognized, traveling the nation for art competitions, but I was depressed. I was lost. I was confused. I had this great gift, this great ability, but something was missing. Because no matter how much gifting and gift that you have, without purpose, that gift remains unfulfilled. So I had ability, but I didn't have purpose. So I didn't even know where the gift was going, where it was taking me to, where it amounted for, what it was here for. Why do I have this gift? I did not know why. So I was depressed because I had ability, but I had no purpose. So God had to begin to introduce me to purpose. So the Holy Spirit and this, as the Holy Spirit partners with your natural ability, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God is what gives purpose to your gift. This, without the Spirit of God, your gift has no purpose. Without the Spirit of God, what you do has no purpose. Your job has no purpose. Your function has no purpose. Your career has no purpose. Your vocation has no purpose. Without the Spirit of God, you're without purpose. Because it's only by the Spirit of God can you have purpose. Let me, let me rewind here because I think somebody needs to get this. Verse 7 in Ephesians 4, it says, But unto everyone is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. So God can give you grace, he can give you gift, but you still lack purpose. Because you don't have the Spirit with the gift that God gave. Now, how many ready to go deeper? We're going to go deeper than I'm going to close on you guys. We're going to go deeper than we're going to close because I've got enough time for this. Now, the next dimension of gifting, we're going to get into it in the word here. Because the spiritual gifts are one thing. So there's the natural gifts. There's the spiritual gifts. And then there are the gifts. Somebody say gifts. Yes. Now they're all gifts, but they're different dimensions of gifting. Different functions, different um, administration. Natural gifts, spiritual gifts, and now gifts, or some would call them ministry gifts. Now, I want you to see these ministry gifts. As we begin to talk about ministry gifts, I want you to understand that it's not church. Are you hearing me? Yeah. These things that we see in the word is actually, they're actually the elements that the universe was founded upon. That's why the Bible calls them mysteries. That's why before the New Testament, they called it a mystery, the mystery of the church. Uh, I want you to understand that word church does not mean a house where people gather and have community. No, that word church means the secret of the founding elements of the universe. Are you hearing, somebody hearing me? Jesus came to establish the church. In other words, he came to establish the foundation of what God's kingdom was founded upon. So the universe is founded upon these very elements. That's why they're secrets. That's why they're mysteries that could not have been disclosed outside of Christ. When Christ came, he came to reveal the mysteries of the universe through the 
vehicle that he designed for it to come through the church. But it's not limited to what we think the church is. So the ministry gifts are in nature. All the way down to the cellular level. Let's read. And verse 11 it says, And he gave some apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors, and some teachers, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Is somebody hearing me? Now, there was something I had to learn about these gifts. So you have natural gifts, you have spiritual gifts, and you have gifts. So your natural gift is natural ability. Spiritual gifts is spiritual ability given to you by the Holy Spirit. And then the gifts are not abilities. These gifts, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers, they're not just abilities, but these gifts are offices. Somebody say offices. And so the Bible says he led captivity captive and he gave gifts to men. In other words, he gave men to men. That term men uh, spiritually means men and women. So when I say men, I'm saying men and women because in the spirit, man is man and woman. How many know Adam named Eve woman? God called Adam and Eve man. Are you hearing me? In the natural, there's a man and the woman. In the spirit, there's just a man. That's why the Bible says in the, 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 um, the they shall leave their father and mother and cleave to their wife. And become what? One flesh. So then man and woman is man. So God led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. These gifts he gave men to men. I used to think that God was throwing gifts out. Abilities. He came. He came. Uh, he, he led captivity captive out of hell. And he gave abilities to men. He gave gifts. No, these are talking about offices that he set in the church to be the expression of the kingdom of God in the universe. Is somebody hearing me? So somebody say offices. So that pastor, that teacher, that prophet, that apostle does not just have gifts. They are called a gift. Are you hearing me? They are a gift. In other words, that person that was set apart specifically for the work of ministry. God set that person for you. That pastor, that prophet, that teacher, that apostle, that evangelist was set there. The scripture says... For the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So, your whoever your pastor is, whoever your apostle, whoever that prophet in your life, whoever that person who holds that office, the the reason why the uh, and, and those of I know many of you guys are many of you guys even have the calling into some office. Listen, that's why for some of us. The, 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 the burden is so heavy because you don't just have a gift, you are a gift. You hearing me? Ah, uh, thank you, Lord. So when you connect yourself with an office, you become a part of that gift. You hearing me? So there's a gift that carries the gifts. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So I want you guys to think about that as we continue to teach on these subjects. And begin to ask yourself, number one, what are my talents? Number two, what spiritual gifts 
is God inspiring in me? Because we're going to begin teaching on these subjects. And what gift am I connected to? God connected me to a gift, a, a Mother McCurry, an apostolic gift. Let me help somebody. Listen, when I connected with Apostle McCurry, Apostle, Prophet, Mother, listen, she was a gift to this city. To this city. So when I connected with her, I became a part of a gift. You're hearing me? And that gift was an assignment to Cleveland for the equipping of the body of Christ, for the raising up of the saints. Ask yourself, what gift am I a part of? Because the gift that you're connected to, the person that God set, is just as important to your growth and to your maturity and your increase in your purpose and your calling as it is to the gifts that you carry. Is somebody hearing me? I'm, I'm trying to help somebody. Listen, many of us are limited, not just because we don't know the gifts we have and the spiritual gifts that God has, is trying to inspire us into. Many of us are limited because we fail to understand the gifts that God has also connected us to. The kingdom of God, there's an order, there's an operation. Yes. The anointing, it flows. And he's trying to get somebody in position to increase. He's trying to get somebody in position to go to the next level, to step into their calling. He's trying to take somebody out of the place of staying that you've been in and place you and position you into the place of go for the things that he's called you to do with your life. Let's bow our heads and pray. Father God, we just pray.